Hello and welcome to this video on automatic longitudinal measurement invariance testing in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models or latent class analysis, and often related to the M Plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, to leave a comment in the comment section and to check out the description for additional resources. So in this video here, I want to show you an option in the M plus software that is relatively new that um, was implemented in the M plus version 8.9. And so this is an option that allows you to automatically assess measurement invariance, also known as measurement equivalence in longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis models. In previous M plus versions, M plus already had options implemented for automatic invariance testing across multiple groups and I have a separate video on that topic, multi-group analysis with automated invariance testing that you can find here in the description under this video. So in this video here I will focus on longitudinal measurement invariance. So in principle that is a conceptually very similar issue to invariance testing in multi-group analysis except that now we don't have multiple groups for which we want to examine whether they have the same loadings, intercepts, etc. But instead we're looking at the same people across time to make sure that the variables load equivalently on their factors longitudinally, that they have the same intercepts and so on. So in multi-group analysis, we have independent groups to compare and now we have here the same people, so say within subjects design where we compare the same people across time. And so then also we want to test for measurement equivalence. And the options in M plus for that are very similar. So you can see here I have a data set that's called change.dat and so this data file has a bunch of variables from which I picked six here in the use variables list and so these six variables correspond to the same three items or the same three observed variables that were measured on two time points where y11, y21 and y31 are the variables at time one and y12, y22 and y32 are the same variables at the second measurement occasion. And so I'm specifying a longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis model here where the first three indicators measure F1, so that is my factor at time one, and the last three variables measure F2, my factor at the second time point. And so when you do that, when you specify a model like this with the automated invariance testing procedure, you don't have an overall model statement like usually in M plus where you say model and then you specify your, um, your model and then you have maybe group specific statements, but instead you only have model T1 and model T2. And then if you had more time points, obviously you would have model T3, model T4 and so on. So you specify a time specific measurement model here. And so model T1 refers to the measurement model at time one and model T2 refers to the measurement model at time two. And this allows M plus to know what you want to compare in terms of the parameters. So then M plus knows, ah, okay, those are the corresponding factors for which I'm supposed to test loading invariance, intercept invariance, and so on, or and or the configure um, invariance model here. And so M plus will do that if you specify in the analysis command model equals configure metric scalar. And so then M plus will automatically fit the configural invariance model where nothing is constrained to be equal across time. The metric model where the loadings are constrained to be equal across time for metric or weak measurement invariance. And then also the scalar model where we have both loadings and intercepts constrained to be equal across time for a given variable that's also referred to as strong measurement equivalence across time. So it's a very convenient way to fit these three models simultaneously and to obtain 
tests of model fit so that we can compare those models, for example, through a chi-square difference test, and then you don't have to specify three different input files. You can run everything with just this one um, syntax file here. So let's take a look at this in terms of the output. Here we have 300 cases in this data set and we get the sample statistics as usual and then under model fit information you can see that this looks a little different from a conventional M plus output file because it gives us an overall summary of the invariance testing here and it specifically it gives us for each of the three models the number of parameters the chi-square test of model fit its degrees of freedom and the p-value and so you can see first of all that in this example the configurable invariance model fit the data very well which is a prerequisite for fitting more constrained models so if this model were already rejected then we wouldn't want to continue with any more constrained invariance models but instead we would first want to address the misfit in this configurable model and or um, go with a different type of analysis or model. So in this case the model is not rejected as you can see from the p-value which is 0.2458 so it's non-significant indicating that the configurable measurement invariance model fits these data well. And so then the next more constrained model is the metric invariance model. You can see the metric invariance model here has fewer parameters and more degrees of freedom than the configurable model and that makes sense because in the metric model we are constraining the factor loadings to be equal across time and more specifically there are two variables for which the loadings are now constrained to be equal and so you might ask why not three we have three indicators for the factor so why do we not gain three degrees of freedom and that's because the first loading was already invariant even in the configurable model because the first loading is by default fixed to one in M plus and we'll see that below when we look at the output file so the first loading is already technically invariant even in the configurable model because it's fixed to 1.0 at both time points to provide a metric or identify the metric of the latent factors F1 and F2 and so therefore we gain only two degrees of freedom when we go from configurable to metric because there's only two other variables for which the loadings need to be constrained then for metric invariance. You can see the metric invariance model also has a um, nice looking p-value for the chi-square 0.3058. It's even a little bit larger than for the configurable model showing that this model also fits well and since it's more parsimonious and still fits well um, we even get a slightly better p-value than for the configurable model. So the chi-square also so say, rewards parsimony in terms of that gain in degrees of freedom. And then lastly, M plus will also automatically fit the scalar or strong measurement equivalence model, which has, um, again, two fewer parameters because now also the intercepts are constrained to be equal across time for the variables such that we have also the same origin of measurement for our indicators. And this is considered critical for interpreting latent mean differences across time or you could say mean changes. So if you're interested in studying for example changes across time due to an intervention or natural development or event or something like that then you would want to make sure that you have strong or scalar invariance so that you can meaningfully compare the latent means across time and analyze latent change in a um, in terms of the mean change in term uh, in, in a meaningful way so you can see the scalar invariance model also fits well has a p-value of 0.4327 again we get rewarded for the increase in degrees of freedom so to say or model parsimony and since this model fits well also it's even looking a little bit better than previous models in terms of that p-value here. So overall the conclusion would already be that we would probably go with a scalar model because it has an excellent 
um, model fit here. Now, in addition to that, M plus will also give you the chi-square difference tests for these models under models compared. And so you can see here under chi-square, now it's the difference in chi-square values, first of all, between the metric model and the configurable model. And you can see that that chi-square difference between the metric and configurable model is not significant, indicating that there's no decline in model fit as we go from configurable to metric invariance. And likewise, there's also not a significant decline in fit as we go from um, configurable to scalar invariance, the higher level of invariance. So that's also non-significant, indicating that even the scalar model doesn't fit significantly worse than the configurable model. And also M plus will provide the scalar against metric comparison as well, which is also non-significant, indicating that a strong or scalar invariance is um, no worse than metric invariance. So overall, the conclusion here is clear that we can assume strong or scalar measurement invariance, which is, of course, a nice thing. Now you can see here that M plus will not give you the strict measurement equivalence model. So it will not test whether the residual or error variances are also equal across time. If that's something that you want to test also, then you would have to do that manually. So you'd have to specify the um, equality constraints in a separate input file on the error terms or measurement error variables. Now, it's not so critical for the interpretation of longitudinal change. And therefore, that's probably the reason why M plus will not give you the strict invariance model because it's not technically important for um, comparing, for example, latent means across time. Okay, then after that, you get the, the detailed model fit information for each model. First, the configurable model, where you get now additional fit statistics, such as the information criteria. You get the chi-square test again that we've already seen. You also get the RMSEA, CFI, and, T and TLI and SRMR. If you're a fan of those indices, then you can look at those as well. And then below that is the same information for the metric model and then subsequently for the scalar model. So for each model, you get the detailed output of the fit statistics as you would usually in the M plus software. And then after that um, are the parameter estimates. First of all, the parameter estimates for the configurable model. Note that you only get the unstandardized parameter estimates under this option. If you wanted standardized parameter estimates, then you would have to run an input file separately for each of these models and request output STDYX or output standardized to get the standardized solution. So all these parameters here are unstandardized. And so, and that's because, that's probably because the um, constraints on the loadings and intercepts refer to the unstandardized solution, not the standardized solution. So it kind of makes sense that M plus doesn't give you the standardized solution here because it could be confusing because in the standardized solution, the parameters would not be set equal here um, technically. So here's first of all, the configurable model where you can see the loadings here can differ between F1 and F2 for the second, for the last two variables, for the first variable, they are the same because they're fixed to one. So you do have loading invariance for the first variable already in the configurable model, but not the other two. And you can already see those loadings are very similar across time. So that's the reason why the um, metric and scalar invariance models also then fit well. And it's because the same is true for the intercepts as well. So you can see here that the intercepts are freely estimated across time, but they're very similar for corresponding variables, 99.69 versus 99.882, and then 49, 49. So they're pretty similar. And, and that's because the data here were simulated. Um, or that is in this case, the reason they were simulated under a um, scalar invariance model. You can see that in the configurable model, M plus specifies the latent means both at zero or it fixes the latent means at zero so that all of the intercepts can be estimated. And so that's different as we move to other models. So let's take a look at the metric model. In the metric model, 
we have the loadings now constrained equal for y2 and y3 as you can see here so now this is exactly the same loading 0.623 as you get here and then for the third variable it's exactly the same also 0.063 so those are now constrained equal the means are still fixed at zero and the intercepts are still freely estimated in this model for all variables and then as we go to the scalar model you can see that now not only the in, not only the loadings are equal between time points but also the intercepts so here you can see intercepts are now formally constrained equal 99.79 99.79, 49.935, 49.935. So those are all exactly the same. And now because of that, we can identify the latent mean of one of the factors. And so this would be, in this case, the mean of the second factor by default in M plus is now freely estimated so that we can contrast the means of the latent variables. And that's interesting because that allows you to assess mean change across time. And so with strong invariance or scalar invariance, we know that that is meaningful to look at the latent mean change. And so now we can interpret this relative to the F1 mean, which is still fixed at zero for identification. So M plus keeps this mean fixed at zero so that the F2 mean can directly be interpreted as the difference between the time two latent mean and the time one latent mean. And so that mean is here estimated to be 0.025. And you can see it's not significantly different from zero. The last column in M plus here gives the p-value for a test of significance of the null hypothesis that the parameter is zero in the population. And so that tests whether this coefficient is significantly different from zero and it's not the case. The p-value is almost 1.0 so it's not significant at the 0.05 level and so that means that there was no significant mean change over time in this construct so the factor means are equal so to say between the two time points and no um, mean change took place here in this um, investigation so the conclusion would be for example or could be that an intervention maybe here that took place didn't work or didn't change anything on average so people on average stayed the same with regard to their latent means so this is the option in M plus for longitudinal invariance testing I hope you found this video useful to get started with longitudinal analyses in M plus if you did then please subscribe to this channel don't forget to hit the like button and also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter and other videos and workshops that I offer and I'll see you next week